This morning, mm. because it was fire. It was fire. The spirit moved without barrier. Yes. Nothing could stop the spirit this morning. Yes. And we thank God. We, we thank God. We bless His holy name. Hallelujah. We give him praise. Yes. We, we we celebrate you all yes. watching from Kenya, Nairobi. We're seeing you from even Germany, Hamburg. Yep. Yes. We're seeing yes. you from Romania. Yes. We're seeing you from Nigeria. Yes. We're seeing you from Ghana, all South over. Africa. We celebrate you. We celebrate Stay you. This is the afternoon session yes. of Azusa, day four. Yes. Ah, you can't afford to miss you this. You can't afford. You can't afford.
and, 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 and you can't afford not to share. Yes, you, you can't have to afford share. not to share. You have to share. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On this note, we leave you in the hands of Pastor Dan as yes. he leads us into the opening prayer of the afternoon session. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise God. Praise Magirito reto sombra ha keten de lemo zibra te kete lego sombra ha reko siga hatada o se ken de le mahamde bla ho shi grahate na mahanda thou alone at god thou alone at god the god of revival the god of revival the god of revival father we honor you for this section and the time in your presence and the time in your presence, Lord, and the time in your presence. Lord, we thank you for the morning glory. We thank you for the morning section. So much of your power, so much of your glory, so much of your unction, so much of your power, Lord. We thank you for the healing. We thank you because cancer was healed. Father, we thank you because barrenness was taken away. Father, we thank you because blindness was taken away. Father, we thank you for the many miracles that you did in the money section. Father, we thank you. We thank you because out of our bellies began to flow rivers of living water. Lord, we thank you for the unusual anointing and grace you have released upon your people and upon everyone that killed in to the morning glory. Lord, we return all the glory to you. We thank you, Father, because there shall be no more tests amongst us, among all who connected in the morning glory. Lord, we give you all the glory. We return all the glory to you because you are doing awesome things in our midst. Thank you for your outpouring, Lord. Thank you for the outpouring of your spirit. Thank you for the awesome thing and many things you're doing through your servants. Apostle Anselm Madibuko, Lord, we give you all the praise for many more things that you're unleashing around the world from this platform in this hour. We return all the glory to you. But I will commit this section into your hand. And we ask, oh God, that you do that which only you can do. Wherever you are listening to me, wherever you are watching me, I want to activate your hunger this afternoon. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want from the Father? The Lord said to Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, if you can see it this afternoon, you can have it this afternoon. If you can see it this afternoon, you can have it as a servant of God is ministering. Oh, Lord, I pray, let the miracle wave continue. Let the anointing wave continue. Let the revival wave continue. Let the unction from your presence keep flowing like never before. Lord, we return all the glory to you. Have your way, sweet Holy Spirit. Have your way in this section. Let no man, let no woman, let no boy, let no girl, let no one. Under the sound of my voice, remain the same after this meeting, this section. Lord, an unusual wave, an unusual outpouring of your presence. Thank you, Father, because you're awesome. We will return all the glory to you, even after this section, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give thanks. Amen. No. 
wherever you are, just lift up your hands and begin to adore our maker. King of glory, the ageless God, the changeless one. The one that makes a way out of no way is God all by himself. None can be compared with our God. We extol your name, Father. The God that rules and reigns. You are mighty in all your ways. Ah, oh, we bless you, Jesus. The God of yesterday, today, and forever. The God that is bigger than time. We extol you, Jesus. We say every time in heaven, none shall declare. Lift your voice and say, Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship, in worship you'll be exalted, O God.
Testimony. Thelma, can I tell them your secret? No, don't tell them now. You sure? No, don't tell them. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> no, the miracles are incredible. Hallelujah. Blessed miracles. We thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. How's it going? How's it going on? It's going on well. How's it going going on, on well. On, on YouTube, let's go to YouTube. Let's We're to seeing YouTube Catherine. First. What's happening there? We're seeing Catherine and she's saying, I'm watching you live. We're seeing you all, 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 and all from Germany. Yes. We're seeing Wo, we're seeing Umar, mm. we're seeing Ufamadu, and saying amen, amen. I'm tuning in. Glory yeah. be to God Hallelujah. in the highest. 
Yes. On Facebook, I hail you in Kiro Tony Obi. I see you, Rita Ann Olua Fumilayo. Lorraine. I see you, Vera Okebu. I see you, Frances. I see you, Tan Tan. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Keep those comments coming. Continue, continue yes. all the way from Ukraine, from you. Romania, everywhere yes. you are. Get connected, yes. tag, yes. like, share. share. Tell somebody to tell somebody to share. tell somebody to connect to their miracle yes. concerning Azusa yes. 18. Azusa 18, a blessed miracle. Hallelujah. So, what's, so now what's, 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 the what moment has come mm. where we bring an anointed servant of God. He is an incredible uh, preacher of the word. I'll just give you a brief um, uh, bio about him. He is the senior pastor of Global uh, Harvest Churches with branches in Nigeria, United Kingdom, and South Africa. To lots of nations for the sake of the gospel. A man with a heart for evangelism. He travels internationally and nationally preaching and teaching the word of God and ministering healing to the sick. The host of the television program Transformation Today, he is committed to church planting, organization of crusade and conferences, and publishing of books as an outreach uh, outlet for his fast-growing ministry. Hallelujah. He is a pastor of pastors with several spiritual sons in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as a spiritual mentor to many, he's committed to seeing individuals discover, develop, and deploy their potential so that they can fulfill their divine assignment. He is married to Jumoke Adeyemi, who remains a strong support to him in ministry. Their union is blessed with four lovely children. He is Reverend Victor Adeyemi. Hallelujah. But before we bring him up, let's bring our convener, Apostle Anselm Madubuko. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Adonai. Mm -hmm. What can't you do? Sing it. What won't you do? Nothing impossible. Nothing impossible. What can't you do? What won't you do? Nothing impossible with her God. Sing with me, say, You do not lie, you do not fail. What is hard for you to do? He doesn't exist. Oh. It can never it can exist. Never, ever exist oh. You do not lie. You do not lie. No, you, you do, do not, not fail. fail. What is hard for you to oh. do? He doesn't exist. Oh. It can never, ever exist. Oh. According to your knowledge and your will for me, what you say you have done, I just need to all I know. Because you are not the man that changes your mind. Oh, those that know you will trust in you. Nothing horses and chariots by the harm of flesh. No man. Lord, oh, 
preacher you will hear is someone I know you will love. A great man of God I love so much. My brother, my friend, I respect. Pastor Victor Adeyemi, God bless you. You're welcome to Azusa. And bless the body. God bless you. Welcome. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Wow, what a joy for me to be in Azusa 2020. I want to say a very big thank you to my mentor, Apostle Anselm Madubuko. Thank you, sir, for this wonderful and awesome privilege to be a part of Azusa. For many, many years from a distance before you gave me the opportunity to come close to you, I've been inspired by your prolific ministry. I've been inspired by the fire that is in your heart for the loss that is in the world. And there are not many meetings like Azusa today, meetings that are focused on revival. I am honored. I am privileged to be a part of this move of God. We celebrate the Apostle General of Revival Assembly. We thank God for your life, sir, and thank you very much for gathering us together online and ensuring that the fire of revival is still spreading around the world, even in the midst of this pandemic. And I want to say a big happy birthday to Mama. The Lord richly bless you, continue to increase you, and enlarge your coast. We sure dearly, dearly love you in Nigeria. I don't think Kenya can love you this much. We love and celebrate you very much, and we pray that the Lord give you length of days and fill it with the fulfillment of purpose in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let us turn in our Bibles this afternoon to John chapter 12. We shall read verses 23 to 24. I'll take my text from there. We'll make reference to several other scriptures in the course of these meetings. I want to celebrate all other ministers of the gospel. I see an array of powerful apostolic gifts ministering in this conference we sure honor you all and i bring you greetings from my darling wife uh, of many years uh, john chapter 12 we are reading verses 23 to 24 but jesus answered them saying the hour has come that the son of man shall be glorified most assuredly i say to you Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Okay? Now, this was a statement the Lord Jesus Christ made when some Greeks were pressing in 
uh, to hear Jesus and to meet him. These Greeks at that time were Gentiles. Gentiles, when you see that word in the Bible, it means non-Jews. When the Lord Jesus Christ came, he came initially to minister under the Old Testament. It was the shedding of his blood that will bring the New Testament into being. So before the New Testament comes into being, we see the Lord Jesus Christ ministering primarily to the Jews. That's why he told his disciples not to preach to the Gentiles, only to the Jews. But now Gentiles were pressing in. And the Lord Jesus was like, okay, if the Gentiles are pressing in, it is time for the Son of Man to be glorified. He will be glorified by his death, burial, and resurrection. Actually, his resurrection is his glorification. So, he said, it is time for me to be glorified. He now explained what God was going to do through his death, burial, and consequent resurrection. He said, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. In other words, what will come out of the dying of a grain of wheat are going to be many grains of wheat. And that's why this afternoon I'm preaching on the Jesus generation. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for the privilege we have to gather online from around the nations of the world as one family under God. And we are looking up to you that you will come speak your heart to us, your very heart for this hour to each and every one of us. We do pray, Lord, that you will light a new fire in our hearts and that the ministry of your precious holy word will light a new revival this afternoon and throughout this conference of Azusa. Thank you for what you already began. We trust you that by the end of this conference on Sunday, there will be a fresh wave of the Holy Spirit sweeping across the nations of the world. It will lead to a mass harvest of souls, transformation of lives and of destinies, and it will reposition the body of Christ for all that you have in store to do in this day and hour. I ask you to anoint this preacher to preach your holy word. I ask that you will anoint the people listening, that their minds will be open and their spirit will be receptive. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Somebody says amen right where you are at home. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Except the can of which falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. When the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to preach the gospel and then before he went to Calvary's cross, he came as the only son of the living God. Introduced to us in John chapter 1 verse 1 as the word of God. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. We get to verse 14 of, I, of John chapter 1 and it says, And the word, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The word of God, this eternal word of God, second person of the Trinity, who was in the beginning with God, who by him all things were made, was made flesh. He was made a human being and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Only begotten of the Father. He was the only one begotten of the Father at that time. The only one had the title Son of God. The only one who could be called a child of God. He was the only one at that particular time. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 3 16 tells us that popular verse of scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes on him shall not perish but have eternal life or have everlasting life. God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son. Notice only begotten son. 
by the time Jesus came, he was the only begotten son of God. God did not have any other son. God had servants. God had, God had enemies also in the world. But God did not have a son except the Lord Jesus Christ. The only begotten son. And God so loved the world, he gave this only begotten son. But I want you to see the plan of God. When the Greeks began to press in. Oh yes, God had always had an eternal plan that not only will this Jesus be a son, but that he will have many sons. God always wanted to have many children. Hallelujah. And he called a man by the name Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 with this powerful eternal plan that he had to have many children. And when he called Abraham, he gave him a promise that he will make of him a great nation. That was going to be a physical nation. And then he promised him in the verse 3 of Genesis chapter 12. At the end of that commission he said, And in you we shall all the families of the earth be blessed. By the time that is quoted in Galatians 3 verse 8. It says, In you will all the nations of the earth be blessed. Glory be to God. God intended all nations to be blessed. When he said families there, in the Hebrew it means ethnicities or nationalities. So he said, in you will all the nations of the earth be blessed. So the call of God upon Abraham was not to just bless one nation, one earthly nation, Israel. It was to bless all the nations of the earth. God intended that Abraham will have physical children who will become known as the Jews. But he will also have spiritual children. And he will have the spiritual children through his only begotten son. And it, when it was time, God sent the only begotten son in to the world and look at the plan according to our text this only begotten son will be sown as a seed so when he was sent to Calvary's cross and he was crucified he was on his way to being sown the seed was being prepared for the for it to be sown and then when he was now laid in the grave he was buried and sown as a seed by the Almighty God when he rose from the dead on the third day. Oh, 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 oh. The only grain, where except a kind of which falls into the ground and die, it abides alone. He was abiding alone as the only begotten son. But when he was sown, he resurrected. Hallelujah. He resurrected with many Jesuses. No, sir. You are not meant to be a Christian by religion. You are not meant to be a religious person who just goes to church on Sunday and then goes to midweek service on Wednesday. God's plan for you is that you should be another Jesus. The harvest is a harvest of Jesuses. Where you are at home, shout, Jesus! Hallelujah. That is who you ought to be. Another Jesus. When maize is planted in the ground and it gives back to children, it gives back to many maize, many cones of maize on the cup. Oh no, it does not give back to anything else. Corn does not give back to mangoes. Mangoes don't give back to guavas. Guavas don't give back to, <laughs> give back to apples. No, 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 no. Everyone gives birth after its own kind. And that is the eternal plan and the purpose of the Almighty God. That God will cause Jesus to give birth after his own kind. The question I want to ask you is this. Do you feel like Jesus? Do you really feel like you are a Jesus on the face of the earth? Are you living like Jesus? Are you preaching like Jesus? Are you healing like Jesus? Are you acting like Jesus? Are you making a difference like Jesus? Love Hebrews chapter 2. It explains this principle also. Let me read from the 14th verse. Hebrews chapter 2. And from the 14th verse says, Since all his children have flesh and blood, they were human beings. So Jesus became human. I'm reading from the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation. Since all his children have flesh and blood, so Jesus became human to fully identify with us. He did this so that he could experience death and annihilate the effects of the intimidating accuser who holds against us the power of death. Verse 15. By embracing death, Jesus sets free those who live their entire lives in bondage 
to the tormenting dread of death. For it is clear that he didn't do this for the angels, but for all the sons and daughters of Abraham. This is why he had to be made a man and take hold of our humanity in every way. He made us his brothers and sisters and became our merciful and faithful king priest before God. Hallelujah. As the one who removed our sins to make us one with him. He made us one with him. He has therefore made us brothers and sisters. There is such a oneness between us. In the New King James Version, it says, Therefore in all things he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful, uh, sorry, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. Oh, this is verse 17. Can we go back to verse 15? Let me read verse 15 from the New King James Version. And release those who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Verse 16 now. For indeed he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Therefore in all things he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. So Jesus was made like us. This is the summary of what he's saying. Jesus was made like us so that we might be made like him. The son of God became a son of man. He became the son of man. That the sons of men might become the sons of God. Let somebody shout hallelujah where you are. John chapter 1 verse 12 says to us, many as believed on him, gave the power to become sons of God. As many as believed on him, gave the power to become sons of God. As he is the son of God, so you are a son of the living God. God expects you today to be living like Jesus on the face of the earth. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Anybody joined to the Lord Jesus has become one spirit with the Lord Jesus. You are not another spirit. You are one spirit. You are not another person. You are Christ. That is who you are in spirit. No wonder 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You are a new creation because you are in Christ. You see, you are who your parents gave back to you to be originally. But when you gave your life to Jesus, trusting in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, you are now reborn in Christ Jesus. You, the you that God knows is the you that you are in Christ. You and Christ are one. Hallelujah. When a grain of wheat falls into the ground, by the time it grows up and it gives birth to much fruit, many grains, those grains don't have another life. Oh. The original life that was in the original grain that was sown is the same life that is inside the other ones. That's why they look exactly like the one that was sown. Oh yes. Ah uh, yes, the challenge of the body of Christ in this generation is that we don't know who we are. The body of Christ has the same challenge that Adam had in the Garden of Eden that Eve had, especially Eve. She didn't know who she was. Satan went to tell her and said, look, eat this fruit. When you eat this fruit, your eyes will be open. You will become like one of the gods. She, the devil was trying to tell her to try to become something she already was. The devil is a liar. I don't need to try to become a son of the living God. I'm already a son of God. I don't have to try to become a child of God. I'm already a child of God. I don't have to try to become something I, I, I am already. If I lose my sense of identity, it's a big problem. I will begin to behave like what I think about myself. It's the reason why Mephibosheth was in Lodibar and the guy was behaving like a slave. He was behaving like, like, like somebody lesser than royalty. 
He didn't know that by virtue of the covenant that his father David had, I mean, his father Jonathan had with David, that he was a prince of Israel still, and he was living lesser than the prince of Israel. The devil is a liar. I'm not going to live lesser than who I am. I will rise up in the authority and the knowledge and recognition of who I am in Christ Jesus, and I'm going to walk in victory. I'm going to live in dominion. I'm going to walk in the power of God. I am going to shake my generation for Jesus. I'm not going to be an ordinary person. I'm going to walk in the super, supernatural power of God for this generation. I'm going to live like Jesus lived. I'm going to operate in the authority of Christ. I'm going to live in the miraculous. I'm going to do the miraculous. And I'm going to change my generation. Somebody shout hallelujah. They didn't know. Eve didn't know who she was. When people don't know who they are, they start behaving in a different way. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Everybody behaves according to their perception of themselves. The body of Christ in the 21st century does not know who she is. That's why we are living far below our potentials. The average Christian of today, and it is not the fault of the Christians, it is the fault of we preach the gospel. We are the ones who taught you to live like that. The average Christian of today is dependent on his pastor for him to live with victory. He's dependent on somebody else for him to have deliverance. The average Christian of today does not know how to hear the voice of God. So they run from mountain to mountain looking for prophets to give them guidance. Whereas Jesus lives on the inside of them, they should be able to hear his voice. The average Christian of today, rather than walking up over devils bind them and cast them out he's afraid of witches and wizards and so he's running from pillar to poster looking for protection he comes to church to pray one day he runs to the harvest to get some chance another day that devil is a liar that generation of Christian is, Christians are fading away let the true Christians rise up in the power of the Holy Ghost let the church be the church let believers be believers let us see Christians be Christians let us see Jesus people be Jesus people this is a Jesus generation we are not in the Old Testament neither are we are we children of the devil we are no longer in the world we have nothing to be afraid of we are the representatives of Christ upon the face of the earth we are the extended hands of Jesus we are the mouthpiece of Jesus we are the eyes of Jesus we are the feet of Jesus we are the, we are the body of Christ we know who we are we run around Looking for help where there is no help. Whereas help is on the inside. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus lives on the inside of you. It is a oneness between you and the Lord. You are an extension of the Lord Jesus Christ. How come you are running from pillar to post? How come? How come the moment coronavirus came, you began to make preparations for your death? Why didn't you write your will before coronavirus came? Why are you running to write it now? You are scared to death. You are scared you are going to die. Why are you thinking like that? Will Jesus have thought like that? No. Let this generation wake up and let the church be the church. Let this generation stop running after miracles. Let miracles run after us. Hallelujah. We are the miracle workers. Jesus in John chapter 14 verse 12 said, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go to my Father. The works that I do shall he do. We ought to be doing the works of Jesus. The story is told of a girl. Many years ago, this particular girl, <laughs> this particular girl, was taught in Sunday school about the Lord Jesus Christ. And as she was taught about the Lord Jesus Christ, we were told that she raised up her hand and said, uh, and said, uh, excuse me, sir. I, um, I know that Jesus Christ you are talking about. Very innocent, small girl. The Sunday school teacher said, really? Said, yes, it is the man that lives beside our house. <laughs> In the simple estimation of that young girl, everything they've talked about sounds like Jesus. Sounds like that neighbor that lives beside our house. That must be Jesus. That is what people ought to say about you. That is what people ought to say about me. Jesus did not name the believers Christians. The Jews did not name believers Christians. 
the Gentiles in Antioch named the believers Christians. They saw them behaving like Jesus. They saw them performing miracles like Jesus. They saw them acting like Jesus. They saw the authority like Jesus. They called them Christians. I hope you and I are not just Christians by word. I hope that if nobody ever knew the religion you chose for your life, never saw you go to church and they know about Jesus of Nazareth, when they look at your life, they will say Christian. They will say Christian. That person is like Jesus. That person is behaving like Jesus. I hope they are going to say so because that is what it ought to be. That is who we really are in our spirits. Hallelujah. The word of God tells us about the words of Paul. I love, love these words. In Colossians chapter 3 verses, verses 1 and 2. Paul said, if then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. We are Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. In other words, you are raised with Christ. You see, as far as God is concerned, when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit baptized you into the body of Christ. You were immersed into Christ. You became one with him as far as God is concerned. When Christ came into the world, it was you. When he went to Calvary's cross, it was you that went to the cross. When he rose from the dead, it was you that rose from the dead. You rose with him. It's a oneness. So we are risen with him. I now love verse 4. Colossians chapter 3 verse 4. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. <laughs> when Christ who is our life. Come and say it where you are at home. Say Christ is my life. Say it again. Christ is my life. Say it one more time. Christ is my life. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ Jesus. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who died and gave himself for me. It is no longer I who live. It is Christ that is living on the inside of me. Oh yes. Paul said the same thing in Ephesians chapter 1. From verse 20. I want to read from the New Living Translation. For I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but that I will, be, I will continue to be bold for Christ, as I have been in the past. And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ, whether I live or die. For to me, living means living for Christ. And dying is even better. In the old King James Version, he said, for to me, to live is Christ. In Philippians 1.21. For to me, to live is Christ. And to die is gain. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Come on, somebody. If Christ is living on the inside of you, if COVID-19 comes to town, will you be afraid? Will Christ be afraid of coronavirus? Talk to me, somebody. I said, when Christ is living on the inside of you, if truly your life is Christ's life, will you be afraid of COVID-19? Will you be afraid of death? Will you be afraid of witches and afraid of wizards? Will you be afraid of poverty? Will you be afraid of the forces of this life? You will not be afraid. Hallelujah. Why are you afraid? You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. The Christian life ought to be a life where Christ is always in manifestation. When Christ lived in this world, before he went to Calvary's cross, he made it very clear he was going to that cross so that he will be reborn in the church. He made it very clear. The spirit that was upon him was to come upon his disciples. Same spirit, same spirit, same Holy Ghost that descended upon Jesus at the baptism of John was to descend upon the church. And that's why he made it clear in John 1, 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from hence. Acts chapter 2, we are told from verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly, suddenly there came a, a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were seated. 
and they appeared unto them clothing tongues like as a fire and he sat upon each and every one of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance the same holy ghost of christ came upon the church not another holy ghost glory to god same holy spirit of jesus the spirit of jesus is in the church Jesus is alive by his spirit in the church today. And the disciples were conscious of this. And that's why from the day of Pentecost, they began to manifest Christ. Soon as the Holy Ghost filled them, and people began to mock them, Peter stood up with the eleven and began to preach the gospel. Peter preached like Jesus will preach. The hearts of the people were smitten that day. Men and brethren, what shall we do? They told them, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And, and 3,000 men, apart from women and children, gave their lives to Christ that day. It was Christ in manifestation through Peter. When Christ is in manifestation through you and I, our preaching will not be empty preaching. Our preaching will be like the preaching of Paul. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, And I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not with excellency of speech, Declaring the testimony of God. Declaring the testimony of God. In verse 5 he said, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing. Sorry, verse 4. He said, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Whenever Jesus preached when he was alive, he preached in the power of the Holy Ghost. Whenever Jesus preached when he was alive, he preached in the demonstration of the Spirit and of the power of the Almighty God. Jesus could not preach and every, any life would remain the same. No! Every time Jesus preached, lives were transformed. Where every time the words came out of the mouth of Jesus, they brought salvation to people. They brought repentance to them. When the words of when words came out of the mouth of Jesus, they brought healing and deliverance to the people. That is what ought to happen to you and I when we open up our mouths preaching the gospel of Jesus. But there are many Christians who don't even preach at all. Hey, if you are truly a Christian, you ought to be preaching. If you are the Jesus generation, you ought to be preaching. If you are the Jesus generation, you ought to obey the great commission, Mark 16, 15 and it, it says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, he that believeth not shall be damned hallelujah the Jesus generation preach persecution came upon the church terrible persecution the Bible tells us that the believers were scattered abroad in Acts chapter 8 verse 1 the Bible says and they that was scattered abroad preached everywhere they went they were preaching the Bible says now Saul was consenting to his death that is the death of Stephen at that time a great persecution arose against the church which was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles look at verse 2 let's read on and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Let's keep reading. Hallelujah. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. It was not just talking about the apostles. The apostles were not even scattered. The apostles stayed in Jerusalem. But the believers were scattered. And they preached everywhere. I don't know where we got this concept. That preaching is only for apostles. For prophets. For evangelists. For pastors. And for teachers. It is not just for them. It is for every believer. We are all called to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, sir, you are not in that bank to make money. You are, you, you are in that bank to serve through banking and to have an opportunity to preach to bankers. No, sir, you are not a lecturer or a professor in that university just to make some money or make a living. You are there to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, young man, you are not just a student in that place in order to get a degree on that campus. You are to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ wherever a child of God finds himself. He ought to be preaching Jesus, preaching Jesus, preaching Jesus. The Jesus generation preach. 
That was what Jesus did when he was alive. He preached. Matthew 4, 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Jesus preached. The Jesus generation ought to preach. You don't understand, pastor. These are the days of COVID-19. We are told to socially isolate. What an excuse. You, aren't you hearing the gospel being preached online right now? Preach online if you have to. Oh, yes. Do your own. You say, how do we do that? It is you preachers that preach. No. Open up your mouth and say something about, share your testimony on Facebook. Share your testimony on Instagram. Share your testimony on Twitter. Don't just go there to watch things. When football matches have been played, you comment. Oh, yes. When entertainment is taking place, you comment. You know everything happening in town. But how about you? Using your little platform to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. How about you? There are some of you watching us right now from home. You are even members of Revival Assembly. And yet when we look at your wall on Facebook, there is no publicity of Azusa there. Hapa, hapa. Won't you even make a little contribution to the extension of the kingdom of God? We are the Jesus generation. We should be preaching the gospel at every opportunity. We should make Jesus known. We should make Jesus famous. The, pornogra the, pornogra the, the, the pornography people, they are not afraid to put their junk on online. How, how are you ashamed of the gospel of Jesus? Those who strip themselves naked are not ashamed to put their evil on the internet. Why are you ashamed of putting Jesus there? My Jesus is priceless. Costlier than money. Costlier than men. Costlier than material things. Of greater value than, of, than anything this world has got to offer. Let's shout his name on the mountain top. Let's shout his power and his gospel everywhere that we can. Every opportunity that we have, we must preach Jesus. The Jesus generation preached Jesus, just like Peter preached Jesus. Again, we see him in Acts chapter, Acts chapter 4. There Jesus, Jesus performed a miracle through Peter. There was this particular man who was, it has started from Acts chapter 3 actually. This man was laid at the gate called Beautiful, always begging for arms there. And the guy was looking at Peter and, and, and John, give him money. But Peter told him and said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. <laughs> Going to talk more about that in the evening. Because we all have what Jesus had, and what Peter had. Peter said, such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter had Jesus, and I know I have Jesus, and I know you have Jesus. If Peter could be preaching, uh, because Jesus, because he was in the Jesus generation, you ought to be preaching also. If Peter could be healing, you ought to be healing also. Glory to God. <laughs> I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. If you see a miracle happen through me, it is not Victor that did it. It is Christ that did it. When sight is given to the blind, Christ opened the sight. When the deaf ears are opened, it is Christ opening the deaf. When miracles happen through me, it is Christ that is doing it. If truly Jesus is living through you, he ought to be doing miracles through you. Oh, somebody is saying at home right now, I know it will happen through you because you are a man of God. You are an evangelist. Listen to me. My pastor, who raised me up in ministry taught me that this thing is for every believer Mark 16 17 this sign shall follow them that believe I've been preaching I've been healing and I've been casting out demons before I became a preacher oh yes before I became a pastor before I became an evangelist I've been doing it because Christ lives inside everybody I don't care if you gave your life to Christ five minutes ago. Christ lives on the inside of you. And God can use you as a miracle worker. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do. And greater works than this shall he do. Hey, 
May Jesus come into manifestation through your life. May Jesus come into manifestation in your home. May Jesus come into manifestation through your church. May Jesus come into manifestation through your ministry. Come on, preachers of the gospel. Let us put all our excuses away and let us stop lazing all around. Let us manifest the real Jesus. There is nothing like an apostle without the special signs of an apostle. All these apostles banding themselves around. No signs at all. No signs and wonders. You better put down your title. Take on the title to the brother and start doing miracles Jesus will rather you are performing miracles as brother Victor than as apostle Victor if you're an apostle come and show the signs come and show the signs do it like the apostle who gathered us together in this conference let us see signs and wonders let us see demons cast out let us see you come on take the gospel to the nations of the world and shake the nations for Jesus hallelujah who is a prophet without signs and wonders? Eh? You say you're a prophet of God? No signs and wonders to attest to the message of the prophet? <laughs> there is nothing like that. What I see about Elijah, fire came down from heaven. <laughs> Glory to God. Fire came down from heaven. Samuel poured, he, there was not a, it was testified concerning Samuel that there was not one single word that came out of his mouth that did not come to pass. <laughs> Not a prophetic word came out of the mouth of Samuel that did not become a reality. No, they all happened. Abraham was described as a prophet in the Bible when he lied that Sarah was his was his sister, and uh, Pharaoh became sick. Everybody in his family became sick. It was Abraham that prayed for them, and all of them were healed because he was a prophet. Where is your healing ministry, prophet? <laughs> Talk less of evangelist. Haba, evangelist. The only New Testament example of a pure evangelist that we have called Philip in Acts 8 5. The Bible says, and Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people get healed unto the things which he spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits. Ah, oh, crying with a loud voice came out of many not just a few came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed many many demonized were delivered many who were paralyzed many who were lame they were healed under the ministry of philip An evangelist what kind of ministry is your own <laughs> somebody say i'm just a gentle pastor do you know the word pastor means shepherd is there a shepherd who does not tend the sheep? When the sheep is wounded, what do shepherds do? Shepherds heal them. That's why God was angry with the shepherds of Israel in the book of Jeremiah that they did not heal the sick that was in their midst. If you are a true pastor in the New Testament, a Jesus pastor, then be like Jesus, please. Heal the brokenhearted and heal those who are also broken in their bodies. Oh yes. We need to see your miracle ministry. You say, well, thank God I'm not any of that. I am just a teacher of the world. Pastor, do miracles. Teacher, do miracles. Because all of us are representatives of the same Jesus Christ. We are in the same Jesus generation. And our Lord Jesus was a miracle worker. We should see miracles. If you are truly in the Jesus generation, preach the gospel and demonstrate the gospel. Demonstrate that gospel by demonstrating the power of God. Let us see miracles in your ministry. No wonder many Christians today are running from pillar to post. When they come to church to pray, then they will go to a mountain and go and go and seek for a false prophet to pray with again. When they come to church to pray, then they will run somewhere to go and burn candles and burn incense again. What, what, what's all that nonsense about? What's all that nonsense about? There should be no reason for people running from pillar to post. When they had Jesus, Jesus was enough. Ah, now there are millions of Jesuses all over the world. Of what use are these Jesuses? Of what use are you? You should become of greater use to God. And let God use you for his own glory. Hallelujah. I love another story. This one is found in Acts chapter 4. Huh? The chief priests and the elders were tired of these apostles preaching the gospel. They decided to stop them. They arrested Peter and John after that great miracle that led to 5,000 men giving their lives to Christ. So in Acts chapter 4, the Bible tells us that they warned them not to preach anymore. But they continued. 
They told them they were rich. <laughs> in verse 13 of Acts chapter 4, the Bible says, in the place, the Bible says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. Can you see the thought characteristic of the Jesus generation? Boldness. <laughs> The Jesus generation are bold. When Peter and John were bold and they could not be stopped and they intended to continue preaching the gospel, guess what happened? They realized they had been with Jesus. You cannot be with Jesus and be the same again. Where is your boldness in the midst of these times? Preachers of the gospel in this day and age when the millennials are getting on social media and they are bashing pastors. Their favorite pastime right now is to bash pastors. They love to try to silence us, to rebuke us, to start down upon us. Are you ashamed to preach the gospel of Jesus? Are you ashamed? The more they abuse us, the bolder we should work. Preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh yes, no matter how loud their voices are, their fingers may be very fast to the keys of their keyboards, uh, but faster will my mouth run to preach and to proclaim Jesus Christ. Like Paul, Romans chapter 1 verse 16, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Be bold. This world has no any other solution except Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If he said, I am a way, we may keep shocked so that people can find another way. If he says, I am a truth, we may keep shocked so that people can find another truth. If he said, I am a life, we can keep shocked so that people can find life elsewhere. But he said in John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. No any other way except Jesus. If there's no any other way except Jesus, we better be bold. The greater the persecution, the bolder our voice shall be. That was how the early church responded to persecution. The more they were persecuted, the louder they preached. The more they were silenced, the louder they preached. They kept preaching, they kept preaching, they kept preaching. And when the times were very difficult, they prayed for signs and wonders. When signs and wonders came, everything was beyond controversy. There is too much controversy out there. Everybody in this day of the internet is saying something on social media. And everybody has a right to say something. The page is their own. The handle is their own. They can say whatever they can. Thank God we also can say whatever we like. <laughs> Woo! Glory be to God. Be bold. There was a time persecution was very heavy. In the days of the early church. And Ephesus, the church at Ephesus, under the pastorate of Timothy, came under severe persecution. Timothy began to find it difficult to operate in the power of God. Paul wrote him a letter, his second epistle to Timothy. Told him in 2 Timothy 1, says, Wherefore I put you in remembrance. Wherefore, therefore I remind you that you stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Come on, Timothy. This is not a time to keep quiet. This is not a time to get passive. Stir up the gift. To stir up there literally means find the fire of that gift. Operate in that anointing. Come on. Don't let this generation silence you. Don't let social media silence you. Don't let the lack of popularity of what you have to silence you. Preach it. Don't change, the, don't change your sermon. Preach it. Don't preach. Don't change what you're, you're emphasizing. Preach it. It may not be popular. It may not have the largest following. Preach it. Boldness is yours. Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. He said in verse 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You have the spirit of power. 
the dunamis of God. Power that is capable of reproducing itself. Explosive power. Tangible power. Irresistible power. <laughs> That's why the early church fought the battle of containment. The more they were trying to contain the church, the greater the church grew. Why? Power. Because of the power of the Holy Ghost. So let us see boldness. Preach the gospel. Demonstrate the supernatural power of God. And be bold. It was after they flogged them and told them not to preach the gospel anymore. That Peter now, the shadow of Peter, when he was passing by, was healing people. <laughs> because when they persecuted them, they went back and prayed. Because they soaked themselves in prayer. The spirit of Jesus was mightily upon them. Acts 4.33 says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of Jesus. And great grace was upon them. Where are the days of Peter? When men of God will enter into a room. <laughs> and people will be getting healed. Where are the days of Catherine Kuhlman? Who will enter into the lobby of a hotel. And people will fall under the anointing because they are within his circumference. Glory to, uh, within a certain circumference of Catherine. Because she carried the presence of Jesus everywhere she went. That is how you, are, you and I ought to carry the presence of Jesus. Let me share two more things before I round up. Number four thing we, we, we have to do as the Jesus generation. Live holy. Live holy. Because you carry the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, you ought to live holy. Christ in you, the hope of glory, says Colossians 1.27. Christ dwells in you through his Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, I mean 3, 16 to 17. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? You are the temple of God. Listen to me. In the Old Testament, the temple was a building where God was worshipped. In the outer court of that temple, there was a rectangular table called the altar of sacrifice. Animals were sacrificed there. It was symbolic of the cross of Jesus Christ. Then there was a tent that had two compartments, the holy place and the holy of holies. That holy place, only the priests of God went there to worship. Then there was a holy of holies. Inside that holy of holies was the glory of God. That glory, called the Shekinah glory, was a glory that whenever it manifested, there was healing, there was deliverance, there were miracles. That glory was in what was known as the Ark of the Covenant. When Israel, on God's instruction, will carry the Ark of the Covenant to battle, they will always win in battle. That glory that was in the temple now resides on the inside of you and I. You are a glory carrier as the temple of the living God. In Acts 1 8, when it says, You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. In the original Hebrew, it reads, You will be tabernacles of witness. Tabernacles of witness was that tent that carried the glory of God that was placed in the temple when the temple was built. You carry God. You carry the glory of God. Because of the glory of God that was in the temple. Every day at the hour of prayer. Thousands of people thronged the temple to go and pray. That hour was the hour of prayer. It was also the hour of incense. When the priest will offer up incense before God. Once the incense is offered up and God accepts it. The people in the temple courts know that they have guaranteed answers to their prayers. What thousands of people went to the temple for, you, you are carrying on the inside of you as a person. It's the glory of God and it is sacred. 
when the children of Eli defied that glory, they died because of God's judgment. When Ananias and Sapphira despised that glory, they suffered for it because it is sacred glory. And that glory made the temple a holy place. You don't go to the temple and defile the temple. Now you are the temple of God. You should not defile the temple of God. Your body is not for immorality. First Corinthians 6 verses 15 to 17 says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. You are one spirit with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus lives in your body. Your body is a holy, sacred temple. He therefore said from verse 18 of 1 Corinthians 6, Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have from God and you are not your own? For you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Your body has been purchased by God. Jesus lives inside your body. You cannot afford to give your body to sexual immorality. No. The Jesus generation live holy lives. When Jesus was alive, he lived a holy life. So we are told in 2 Corinthians 6 from verse 15 to 16. And what are called as Christ with Belial. And what part as a believer with a non-believer. And what agreement as the temple of God with idols. For you are the temple of the living God as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. If you want to describe how Jesus lived his life in one word. Holy. Holiness was his lifestyle. In all points tempted like as we are. Yet without sin. Jesus was absolutely sinless. Let us see Jesus manifest through holiness of living in your life. We will, our witness will be so dim. Our voice is so despised. If this generation does not arise and walk in holiness. The reason why we preach and we are not respected is because there's so much filth in the church. And it's time for the church to arise and shine for our light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Light is only effective in its contrast against the darkness. The moment the light is not different from the darkness, it will not be effective. Holiness of living is a must. Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Finally, number five, we've got to walk in love. The Jesus generation walks in love. Love was the motivation for God sending Jesus. Love was the motivation. Why Jesus did all he did before some of his miracles, the Bible will say, and he had compassion on them and he healed their sick. Love moved Jesus. The Bible now tells you and I, in 2 Corinthians 5 verses 13 to 14, let me read from the New Living Translation. 2 Corinthians 5, 13 to 14. Listen to this. If it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are out of our minds, it is for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. So that's why we live in ho we live holy lives. But it is Christ's love that controls us. The motivation for our holiness is a love motivation. And this love motivation is the reason why we do everything we do. We have to stop living for ourselves. We have to stop living for our own benefits. It's the reason why the call of God is upon many Christians into ministry. We never obey. Why? Because it is not to our advantage. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, if any man will come after me, if you want to follow me, you have to deny yourself. Let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. 
Following Jesus requires we laying down our own lives, consecrating ourselves to his will and to his will alone. This love must radiate through us. We are told in Galatians 5, 13 to 15, for you brethren have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. Through love, serve one another. Love should be the motif for preaching. Love should be the motif for ministry to the sick. Love should be the motif even when we go out and do our, our social action. Feeding the poor. Not to gain popularity. Not for the purpose of the press. Not to make us look good before the world. No! It should be because we genuinely care. Was the other Roosevelt that used to say people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You ought to care genuinely from your heart. People know when you are doing it for show. But they know the difference when you truly care. It will never be a true witness if all you've done is to do it for show. People can give lives that we collect your good deeds. But it will not lead them to Christ because they know you are doing it for show. Don't be like the politicians. Do it like Jesus did it. He didn't do it to be popular. He did it because he loved. Judas kept the purse very often. He gave to the poor. When Jesus told him, that which thou doest, do quickly. The Bible tells us that the other disciples thought Jesus was telling him to go and give to the poor as the custom was. It was custom regularly that Jesus sent him to give to the poor. This love manifested in, it, in the forgiveness of Christ. At the cross, those who crucified him, those who mocked him, those who stripped him naked, Jesus said to them in Luke 23, 33 to 34, and when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. Can you imagine that? No. To that 21st century Christian. Ah, no. He is not ready to forgive anybody. Anybody that does him any wrong must die. <laughs> The same love of Christ manifested in Stephen in Acts 7 verses 59 to 60 and they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying Lord Jesus receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice Lord do not judge them with this sin. And when he had said this he fell asleep. That is he died. Guess what somebody? The guy that was supervising the death of Stephen was by the name Saul. The Bible says he was consenting to the death of Stephen. They laid the garments of Stephen at his feet like this. If Stephen had said, Lord, punish him for his sins, he will never ever have been able to get born again. Never. In Acts 7, he said, Lord, Lay not this sin to their charge. Don't charge it to all these people, including Saul. Guess what happened? Acts 9, he was on his way to persecute the church in Damascus. Jesus met him on the way and gloriously converted Saul. He became the apostle Paul who wrote two-thirds of the epistles of the epistles of the Holy Spirit to the church. The forgiveness of Stephen, which was like the forgiveness of Jesus, led to the conversion of Saul. We must manifest the love and the forgiveness of Jesus if we are the Jesus generation. Except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. But when it dies, it brings forth much fruit. Are you living like Jesus? Are you preaching like Jesus? Are you healing the sick and doing miracles like Jesus? Are you bold like Jesus? Are you walking in holiness like Jesus? Are you walking in love like Jesus? Come on. Wherever you are, just get up to your feet where you are watching at home right now. And I want you to begin to consecrate yourself unto the Lord Jesus afresh. Begin to say, Lord Jesus, I consecrate my life to you. I lay down my life before you right now. Please come and live through me. Jesus, manifest yourself through me. You are my life. I am crucified. Nevertheless, I live. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. It is Christ that liveth to me. Jesus, come and live in my life. I consecrate myself to you. 
Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and call upon God. Go ahead and surrender yourself absolutely to him. Keep praying. While we are praying, if you are watching and you have not given your life to Christ, but you are ready to get born again at this moment, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, dear God in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. I am sorry for my sins and the life that I have lived. I repent of them. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer. Thank you for saving my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. You are now a living God. Come and go ahead and join us in prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I consecrate myself to you. Use me for your glory. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. One more minute, please. Go ahead and pray for yourself. I don't just want to be called a Christian by name. I want to be a real Christian. I want to be a part of the Jesus generation. I want to live like Jesus. I want to preach like Jesus. I want to heal like Jesus. I want to be bold like Jesus. I want to walk in holiness like Jesus. I want to walk in love and forgiveness like Jesus. May Jesus be manifested through my life in this generation. Oh, Father. Let Jesus be manifested through me. Lord, I repent for everywhere I've lived that has not lined up with the life of Christ. Forgive me, I pray. Father, I pray for each and everyone watching today that all of us will return back to where we have fallen. That Lord, we will begin to live lives truly worthy of being identified with Christ Jesus. I pray, baptize everyone with fresh fire. Fresh baptism of the spirit of Jesus. Fresh fire to preach. Fresh fire to heal. Fresh fire of boldness. Fresh fire for holiness. Fresh fire of the love of God. Let that revival begin. And let it continue. Thank you Heavenly Father. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus precious name. Amen and amen. We give God the glory. Thank you very much. Apostle and I'm looking for the opportunity to preach. I'm looking forward to being back again in the evening. God bless you all in Jesus name. Amen. My heart beats for you. Who oh, has a deep and so what a soul? My soul longs for you, Jesus. Forever and ever, yes. My heart beats for you. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, oh, I've got something more than gold. I tell it to the world, Jesus is more than gold. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. What's a word, what's a message from Reverend Victor Adeyemi, the Jesus generation. We are the Jesus generation. We are called to be an extension of the kingdom of God. We are called to heal. We are called to deliver. We are called to cast out devils. We are called to live in holiness. We are called to preach the gospel in boldness and to demonstrate the power of the gospel. What a word. 
Hallelujah. Now there's still so much to come. Our next service is at 6 p.m. Nigerian time. You don't want to miss it. Invite your friends. Invite your loved ones. Every child of God needs to hear the mind of God for this season. Hallelujah. We give God the praise for great things he's doing in our midst. Also, on behalf of the Apostle, I'd like to welcome everyone that is joining us on our online service for the first time in Azusa 18. You are welcome. We are glad to have you. The Holy Ghost has found you. I want you to know the conference continues fr this evening, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Make sure you're a part of every service. Amen. Now it's time to give our offering unto the Lord. I remember the story of Solomon. The Bible talked about Solomon. He gave an offering to God, and God came to him. We understand in scriptures, God says, come unto me. This time around, God came to him because of his offering. Your offering can move the hand of God. Your offering can move situations. And so this afternoon, I want you to bring out your offering. Our offering is online now. Hallelujah. I believe our accounts are on the screen. Begin to make those transfers. Send your money on errand for you in the kingdom. As you do so, the Lord will richly bless you. Your, your vineyard would never be empty. Your heavens will always be open in the name of Jesus. See you again at 6 p.m. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. What Thank you so much, Pastor Grace. What an amazing thank time you. Thank you. with thank the Holy you. Spirit. Yes. Oh, we thank the Lord. We thank the, the Lord. The presence came heavy. Wow. Ah. Charles, did you, did you hear Reverend Victor teach us about the Jesus generation? Yeah. The need for us to start preaching. Yeah. Use every platform available to preach. Yes. Preach Jesus. Yes. Sing Jesus. Preach wherever you go to. Yes. If you know you love him, preach him. If you know you appreciate him, preach, preach. him. You can't take it out. Yeah. You know, it's, it's mind-blowing. It's and when you're preaching Jesus, you need to live holy. Yes. Because yes. the Holy Spirit is in you. Yes, God. Our bodies yeah. are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And then after that, we should walk in love. In love. Hallelujah. Oh, what an amazing... I hope you didn't miss that. Incredible. You know, most of us are ashamed of the gospel because we are afraid to offend. Hmm. You know, but why? Why are you afraid? Share the gospel. Share it wherever. Each platform you have is your, that's your pulpit. You mm. can, from there, you just deliver the word. As a student. And let God be praised. As a lecturer, as exactly. a banker, wherever Anywhere you are. Anywhere you find yourself. As a cleaner, share the word of God. Just share it. Share Hallelujah. It. Hallelujah. Sorry about the uh, glitch on Facebook. Uh, we'll be back later. Uh, Facebook will be up later. Uh, what's happening on YouTube right on now? On YouTube, we're still having K3 saying glory, glory, glory. Yeah. We have Chimere uh, Ufama just saying amen. We have even Abiola saying glory to God in the highest. Remember our activity online. We told you to create a one-minute video of you watching Don't Azusa. Don't forget. Azusa 18. Yeah. Post it on your timeline. On Facebook, you tag Revival Assembly yes. and make use of the hashtag Azusa 18. Azusa yeah. is spelled A Z U S A. A, -Z -U -S -S -A. And if you're on Instagram, post it on your timeline and tag at official Revival Assembly, Assembly. and make use of the hashtag again. Charles, how about yes. you? Uh, yeah, we have uh, more meat coming later mm. by 6 p.m. You don't Ooh. want to miss it. Start sharing now. Start, Start sharing liking. now. Start liking. Subscribe. Subscribe. Stay connected. Let everybody know. Preach Jesus. And you know there are watch parties. We have watch parties. Ooh. Just start watch parties everywhere you can. And God will bless you. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. See you at 6, 6 p.m. Nigerian, Nigerian time. Nigerian time. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the God who works. And he's in needs to come. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, and in you I trust. My life is in your hands. Jesus. Jesus. You Who is at least to come?